breaking COVID uh, news uh, from Merck. Meg Terrell uh, is uh, is with us. Meg, joining us on the news well, good morning. line. What, what are the details? Yeah. Well, so some good news and some bad news for Merck this morning. You know, they were working both on vaccines and on therapeutics. They're announcing this morning that they are stopping work on those vaccine candidates, but continuing the work on the two drug candidates that they have in development. Uh, on the vaccine front, it's because early results showed that the immune response generated by these vaccines was not at the level of what we have seen from other more advanced vaccines. So they are stopping work on those two early stage vaccine candidates for COVID-19, but they are continuing the work on their drugs in development for COVID, which arguably have generated more attention for Merck. Uh, one of them is the one that they licensed from a company called Ridgeback. Um, it's a small molecule drug, an antiviral that you can actually take um, by mouth, so orally, uh, like a pill. Um, and that is one that people are very excited about, and they say they should have data in the first quarter, uh, and we'll share that, you know, if, if positive. Um, and so that is one people are really looking forward to hearing about. The other one, of course, is a uh, drug that they just acquired for uh, people with severe COVID infection who are in the hospital. And that one they already have a government contract for and are ramping up production of. Uh, but, guys, they're continuing that work on those drugs. But because the vaccines were not measuring up in the early stage trials, they are discontinuing that work. Back over to you. So, Meg, uh, give it to us. Inquiring minds want to know what 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 what. what was it a spike protein in an adenoviral vector? What was it that was different about the Merck vaccine? It's not a, it's, it's not a messenger RNA, but should we worry about J and J now? But is it an adeno? Tell us. Uh, no, they actually used two different approaches. Uh, both okay. were uh, viral vector vaccines, uh, so similar to the approach being used by Johnson and Johnson and AstraZeneca, but different viruses viral vectors, to be. Okay. Uh, Exactly. So there was a, a measles virus and then a vesicular stomatitis virus, VSV, which actually is the same approach okay. that they used for their yeah. Ebola vaccine. And a vaccine. spike protein? So, carrying a spike, the same spike protein? Or, a, a, or like Gottlieb always says, an epitope of the spike? We, we can ask him <laughs> about this maybe. But it, was it trying to focus on the spike protein once again? I do believe uh, it was focusing on the spike protein. Um, but work. I don't have those details at okay. my fingertips. Yeah. Didn't work. Okay. Becky. Hey, Meg, let me let me just ask, when they say it was an inferior immune response, I guess that means it, it didn't get the same efficacy levels. And it, we know the existing ones that we've gotten already um, from Moderna and Pfizer are incredibly effective at 95 percent. Is there any way to, to figure out how effective it was? Was it even before that, if it's not getting the same immune response? Because when we first were, started trying to develop these, we were thinking if you could get 50 to 60 percent effectiveness, that would be great news. It, it, have we changed our entire standards at this point, where if something's only 70 percent effective, we're not as interested when we have existing candidates that are already 95 percent effective? Because that's been the same thing I've been wondering about J&J, &J too. Um, we know that it, it, it did inspire an immune response for J&J. &J. We don't know how effective and we're waiting to, to find out. It's, it, it gets to the point where if you have a lot of different vaccines that aren't as effective, is there some sort of a fight that breaks out over which one you get, how you, how you go about that? What, what can you tell us, if anything? Those are such important questions. And of course, our standards have been raised, right? Seeing 95% efficacy for the first two vaccines, we're all spoiled and we all want 95% efficacy from the next one. Uh, you know, from expectations around Johnson & Johnson's vaccine, we're hearing, you know, could it be 80, could it be 90? The FDA standard is the same, you know, 50% efficacy. Um, in terms of what will get approved, I, I believe that is still the efficacy hurdle. However, you know, what people will actually want once it gets out on the market is a separate question. Um, what Merck was looking at here was just that earlier stage immune response. So just what level of antibodies uh, did the vaccines generate in those earlier trials? We don't know what the levels were. They haven't published them yet, and they say that they will. Um, but what we've seen from the Johnson & Johnson early stage trials is that they did generate a higher level of antibodies. Um, so, you know, comparable to the mRNA vaccines, I was told by j, &J chief scientific officer. So they have confidence that they'll generate strong efficacy in actually protecting people from the disease. But we should be seeing that within a week or two. Um, for Merck, I guess the levels just were not high enough, both compared with existing vaccines and also with natural infection. Uh, and they say this just isn't worth pursuing for COVID. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.